Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is David from Devden Web Dev, and on this channel, I like to talk about all things WordPress, especially using Elementor as the page builder. About a week ago, I came across this amazing tutorial by Imran from Web Squadron, where he showed how to create this amazing hero section with this unique hero image. And I must say that I was really impressed. If you are interested in getting your hands on the templates, you can find it in Imran's Learn Elemental course, which I will link to in the description below. You will not only get this template, but you also get a bunch of other unique templates, along with some nice, easy to follow tutorials. So I highly recommend that you go and check it out. So now, with that out of the way, there was one comment on this tutorial where the person asked, how can we make the design more scalable and avoid using fixed pixels? Because I'm sure you are all aware that I tend to avoid using fixed pixels for anything because it can cause unexpected results depending on the device the person is viewing the website from. So I tend not to use fixed pixels for any width or height property. After reading the comment, I decided to take a look at creating a more flexible solution where everything is done relatively so you don't have to use any fixed pixels and it can be easily customized. You don't have to go through lots of Canva work just to try to change anything on the image. Everything can be done right here and you can easily change the shape or the design however you want without too much stress. So in this video, I'll walk you through my approach to tackling the challenge. But just as a heads up, this isn't a tutorial, it's just me showcasing how I approached the design. So I wouldn't be showing you what to do, but I'll just show you what I did. The solution I used mostly involves custom CSS, so you see a lot of custom CSS, but everything is controlled centrally using CSS variables, so you don't have to change any of the code. All I have to do is just change the CSS variables and it reflects across the entire hero section. So now, without any further ado, let me show you the design. So here's the design I recreated. It's quite similar to what he designed. The colors and everything is the same. So I took this as the primary color and then this is the secondary color. And this is maybe like a text color or the neutral or accent color or whatever you want to call it. So now let's go over to the edit page to see how everything was created. To make the design scalable, I used CSS classes to abstract all the styling. So for the shape, for the colors, and for everything, I used CSS variable for even the grid. So rather than having to control all of them individually, everything is controlled from one CSS style sheet. And since it's using classes and not the selector tag, you can use Elementor free. You don't have to use Elementor Pro because there's no Pro feature used anywhere on this um, page, everything is using the free version. So this is the image box widget. This is just a button widget, an image widget, a container, a heading widget, and so on and so forth. So everything is using free version. And all I just did was add class names to all the items. So the parent section has a class name of the hero section. Then this has a class name also. And then all I did was, rather than having to change even the gap individually, everything is changed using CSS variables that I created. So you can see this is the CSS file. And now you will notice that if you want to change anything, all we have to do is just come and change the values. So let's say we want to change the spacing between all the items. You can make it 0 0.25 or even 0.5. You see everything changes accordingly, but I'll just leave it at a small value. You can even change the size of the cutout. So rather than having zero pixels, maybe you say you want it to be all rounded. You can say you want it to be 50% and everything turns to 50% immediately, all circular, or you just say you just want it to be like maybe five pixels so that it's not completely sharp edged. So. You can do any adjustment that you want. You can also change all of the colors. You can see this is for the primary color. If you say you don't want it to be red, you want it to be 
it'll be like blue. See, everything changes accordingly. If you want the secondary color, which is the purple, you don't want it to be purple, you want it to be pink. See, you get a pink color, or you say you want it to be black. Everything changes accordingly. Same with the cutouts. If you want to change all the cutouts, you don't, maybe you want this one rather than to be on the left, you want it to be on the right. All you have to do is change the class name as attached to it. So come to the image under the advanced tab. Literally, all you have to do is just change the class name. So right now it's top left. So if you want it to be bottom right or bottom left and everything changes for that image, only you don't have to start doing any adjustment anywhere. So everything is controlled centrally. That is the nice thing about this layout. So all I did was first, I set up uh, a grid. So that's the only thing I used the editor panel for was the grid. So if you come to the parent inner container, if you go over to the grid, I set it to two by two grid. Then for the images, I set all of them under the style to have a 100% width and a 100% height. And that was the only width and height that I set. I didn't set any pixel value for any of the items. If you can come to all of them, they all just have 100% width and the default width, which is also 100%. So no fixed pixels, because once you start playing with fixed pixels, you have to start to adjust everything all around and then it becomes weird. But once you use that CSS grid, you can make all of them have equal widths and you don't have to mess around with heights and all that. And then for the tint on the image, like he did, he was using Canva, but you can actually just operate everything from here. So if you see under the style sheet, if you go to the CSS variable I called image tint, you can change the color or you can even change how much of the tint you want. So let's say right now it's purple. So if you say 0.5%, 0.4%, like 0.2, which is like 20%, I think. So that's how you can adjust everything. So everything here is adjustable. You can change the color. So you want it to be gray. See, it's a bit grayish. And all is controlled from this one style sheet. So all you can do, you can now move this CSS to wherever you want. Maybe you want it to be in an organized code snippets plugin. You can just move the whole style sheet to code snippets plugin and everything will be controlled centrally rather than having to mess around with Canva or trying to adjust the width and the height. The only thing I would advise is to change the image to have a square width and height so that you're not wasting pixels. So you try to get your images to have the correct pixels before importing them into your media library so you don't have to be having a long image. It will still work out because since I've set the width and height to 100% and then object fit to cover, so it will always fill the entire container, but it's always good to try to get your image to be the right shape when uploading, not just trying to use CSS to adjust the images. And you see it is fully responsive. So if you go to, to this is tablet, you go to mobile, everything is fully responsive. You don't have to do any adjustments. Everything just works all right. You can also add like media queries. So maybe you want for mobile, you want to have a higher gap. So all you have to do is just add in a media query and then increase the gap and everything will adjust accordingly. One thing I would admit is that I could have used the Elementor panel if Elementor had done a usable global class system. But for now, there's no global class system. So it is difficult to make a scalable design without having to mess around with custom CSS. With that being said, let me just remind you that if you want to get your hands on Imran's templates, the link will be in the description below for his Learn Elementor course. You can go and check it out and you get amazing uh, designs from him. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any specific design requests that you would like me to cover in a future video, don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section below. And remember to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and hit that subscribe button so that you can get more awesome WordPress content like this. And until next time, happy designing. Bye.